Okay, now that we have our old control arm out, which is this one, we're going to put a new one in. One thing you can notice is this one's a little more heavy duty. This is the new one. You can see how thick it is, which is good. Um, the other thing is you can see how sloppy this ball joint is on the old one, how I can move it around with just one finger. This one is the new one. <sighs> really stiff. It'll move, but it's hard. That's how it's supposed to be. So you don't have any excess movement. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to show you the reason why we made a scratch around the bolts. In here you can see a slot. If you can show it to you, yep. you can see my finger sticking through there, how it moves. That's where they make the alignment adjustments at the alignment shop. So we're, we scribed it so we can get it back close. This one will have to go to the alignment shop for an alignment, but sometimes some places may want to charge you more if you have, they have excess adjustments to make. So that's why one reason why we want to make it as close as we can. You definitely want to, if you do this job, you definitely want to take it from your house or wherever you do the job to the alignment place as fast as possible and get it done so you don't cause other excessive wear in the front end or wear on your tires, things of that nature. So what we're going to do now is we're going to slide this back in. Here's that new one. This has got to go underneath the harness here. Now it may be a little bit tight and that's normal. We're just going to squeeze this thing in here. You may have to tap it a little bit. So get that lined up. Get our bolts. Remember the way the bolts came out. Our bolt came out this way. You may have to a little bit to get it lined up. It's always a good idea to get both bolts started before you tighten anything down. Actually what we're going to do is we're going to get everything started together, the two control arm bolt mounting bolts and the ball joint to the steering knuckle then we can tighten everything down that we we know everything's positioned the way it needs to be because you just have rubber bushings in here and if we tighten it down here then it's going to be too much tension going up this way so we're going to want to line everything up and then tighten it all down real tight this bolt came out from this side on those and like we've said in some of our previous videos you may be watching this thinking well I don't need to sit there and watch them take every bolt off and that's not it <laughs> but what our goal is is to show you as detailed as possible what needs to be done to, to do a job <laughs> And since we dropped the bolt and can't find it, we will be right back as soon as we find it to continue with this repair. Okay, we found the other nut that we needed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get this steering knuckle up here that has everything with your brakes. It slops around a lot, so you got to be a little careful. I'm just going to lift the control arm up, slide the ball joint post in. Oh, before we do that, what we need to point out is you'll see a hole in, in the threaded area here. That's where your cotter pin goes. Just to make things easier, if you can get it to go sideways or front to back according to the vehicle line, it makes it a lot easier to put the cotter pin in instead of trying to fight through different angles because some vehicles are tough or a tight fit. So we're going to put that in. Now you see it didn't come all the way through. All we have to do is push down on the control arm. And then wiggle the knuckle a little bit till it falls all the way through. Then we just spin our nut on here. Now once you have all this this much done, 
you can go ahead get ready to tighten these bolts up here that hold the control arm to the frame now that we've it has that slot so you're going to want to move the control arm forward and back and try to hold it it helps if you have a, some an assistant that way you can line it up with the scribe marks and then just tighten this thing down as tight as you can get it so we're going to do that and we'll be right back okay now we have our control arm bolts bolts tightened as tight as we can get them by hand um, don't worry about over tightening them you just want to especially tight enough just so it doesn't move because you're going the guys at the alignment of the shop shop will have the, the right tools they need to get it loose so if you got it too tight don't worry or think you do next we put our castle nut on our ball joint here you need to get that nice and tight if you can get a good view with the camera you'll see that through this slot is the hole and what we want to do is get that lined up real good with the hole we got to go a little bit farther so we can slide our cotter pin through so I'm just gonna line this up a little bit more be real careful to when you line it up because you do not want to back the nut off if you pass it up you're gonna to need to try to go farther so that looks pretty good Okay, so now we have our new cotter pin here. We're just gonna, I'm gonna slide it in from the other side so you can watch what we need to do. So we're gonna go in from this side. You see it comes through. Now what you wanna do here is where you wanna take your side cutters. We're gonna turn it around. Side cutters are your dikes. And all you need to do to keep this so it stays in place is just try to grab one side of it is actually enough and get it pushed over, bend it around, around the nut like that. You can do one and then bend this one to the side. We can actually take both of these and go the same direction. And that will be enough to keep it in place. And then that will keep the nut from backing off. Can you see in there? Uh -huh. And that's it. That's how to replace a control arm on a 2001 Ford Expedition. Uh, we're going to go and do the other side, but the other side is going to be exactly the same, except things will look a little reversed. Um, one thing I wanted to note is that you'll see us take breaks in between sections of doing the job. Um, sometimes it'll be because we're looking for tools or something that we might have dropped. Other times will be just due to the fact of the length of the videos. Um, we want to make these as optimal as we can for, one, for us uploading them. <clears throat> and two, we don't want you to have to load a 40-minute video. This way you can watch them in sections. And if you need to take a break in between the job, you don't have to worry about where you're at in the video. Um, so we're doing our best to try to keep them somewhere around 10 minutes, give or take a minute or two. And we figure that's an optimal length of a video for you so we're gonna get this off the jack stamp and everything and we're gonna work on the other side but thanks again for watching our videos and see so you too can uh do this control arm job even though it seems like a major job but you can see it was pretty easy it went in like butter and we'll see you next time